what is up everybody thanks for hanging out y'all looks like we got a couple people here already want to just shout out and say thank you we've got angelo thank you angelo angelo from the future if i remember correctly angelo's in the future right now he knew it i knew it we all knew it crispy how you doing drink water what's up palmer knife nut how y'all doing uh so this wasn't really planned for me to go live tonight. I uh, sent a message to Sharif, asked if he was going to go live. Uh, he said he was kind of feeling a little under, so he wasn't necessarily thinking about going live tonight. So sent him a link also. Sharif may join us, may not, but I figured I'd jump a little early if Sharif was not going to go live and make my life a little easier rather than doing a late, late, late night. Uh, didn't want to go live tomorrow because Roll Shambo is celebrating his 7,000 subscribers, which is awesome. And uh, he's going to be having a pretty sweet giveaway that I will be participating in the chat for that one right there. So if y'all haven't, Roll's going live tomorrow night um, and he's going to have a pretty sweet chat. So, But... I was uh, excited because I was able to, I'm drinking water, flavored water, and I can't, I just can't re drink regular water. I have to have flavor in my water and uh, I need to hydrate better. So that's why I started with water to hydrate myself a little bit better. What's up, Joseph S? I just saw your name pop up there. Thanks for swinging by. Um... No, I was pretty excited because this, I got my whole area like clear and clean. I spent Sunday just kind of cleaning out. I, this is all in my garage. So I spent Sunday kind of clearing out my garage and getting stuff organized outside my mall curtains right here. And um, that made this area so much more clean and nice and tidy. And so I was excited to just have it all nice. And I put knives away, but I got knife storage more easily accessible and uh around me so i can like mess with stuff to, if i want to rather than having to take things in and out all the time and dig around but as i am talking about knives i just took three knives out of my pocket for the day these were my carries today i had the kaiser cormorant absolutely love this thing I got the LMAX version with the Nebula fat carbon. This thing is wicked. If you if you like fidgeting with knives, uh, this is 100% the fidget knife of 2023 that came out. This thing was an absolute banger. Absolutely loved this right here. I want to get the titanium version, but this was my fidget knife of 2023. Still is. It's just a ridiculously, absolutely fun fidget monster. So this is the Kaiser Cormorant. This was in my pocket today. This was kind of my, my go-to cut and workhorse type thing. And then I had my Harsey 4-inch today as well. So I got the Spartan Harsey 4-inch in, in pocket today. This is the S45 VN version. This one is customized by Just the Tip EDC. And then in the back pocket, back left pocket, I had my towel compact from Kunwu. So this is another LMAX towel compact from Kunwu. So I had two LMAX and then S45. I had some pretty nice uh, steals today for sure. But yeah. Kyle, what is up? Steve Kler. Steve Kler's in the house. Oh, man. Steve has no idea how special tonight is. I mean, he might now that I'm mentioning it, but Steve has no idea how special tonight is. Bushcraft rebooted. How it, howdy, howdy, howdy. What's up? Goondocks, how you doing? So good to see. I think I saw Kyle. Who's Carbon? You call it fat. <laughs> everybody. Everybody, Kyle. Call everybody's Carbon fat. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so tonight, I wanted to kind of recognize uh, someone from the community, and I'm not going to say their name, but I'm just going to say thank you, because they do not realize, and I did not realize, that I needed this grail until it was gifted to me. And so uh, tonight, I want to take a look at uh, a knife that was gifted to me over this last week, 
And um, if you're in the if you're in their chat, whatever, feel free to say thank you or you're welcome or whatnot. Um, but this was one that I had a conversation with someone and they were asking me about a front flipper and I couldn't think to mind what they were talking about. And I was like, yeah, I, I, good kind of. Yeah. And I thought they were thinking a different knife. And then at the end of our conversation, they were like, yeah, that one, uh, that one, that one's yours. And I was like, wait, what? And they're like, yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh. So, um, I have babied this thing over the last couple days. Uh, I didn't carry it today, but I did carry it yesterday. And, uh, this is the newest knife to my collection. And I'm very happy because it's a knife that I didn't buy this year, but no, Kyle, it was not you. No, Kyle, it was not you, but you could take credit. It was, it was not Kyle, but thank you, Kyle. Very much appreciated. Um, this is a Rob Johnson, uh, Cypress. So this is a front flipper, Rob Johnson Cypress. And I will tell you, I did not realize I needed this knife in my life until I had it. And it's a front flipper that is absolutely amazing. Really nice. Um, you can front flip normal big style like that. You can also front flip with the index rollover, which is really nice. And I like that. And I was talking about this and I kind of look at a knife, um, especially front flippers. If I can do one front flip, it's a good knife. It's, it's, it's okay. Good knife. If I can do two, it's a really good knife. And if you can do the top flip on it, it's a fantastic knife. And this one was not designed for the top lift top flip, but absolutely, absolutely love this knife. And so I just want to say huge. Thank you. Huge. Thank you for this knife. Um, absolutely. I mean, this thing to me, when I look at this, it reminds me of a, a Holt, like really when I look at like the style and I look at like the aesthetics of it, the coloring to it, this thing reminds me of kind of a Holt knife. And so I thought it was fitting. If y'all haven't seen, um, knives fast, Casey got gifted a Holt earlier today. So he was 100% showing that off. And I wanted to show off the knife that I got gifted. And this thing is the grail. I didn't know I needed until it was gifted to me. It's absolutely fantastic. I love this knife so much. Uh, it's so fitting. I had one spot left in my case for sentimental knives, and this is going to go in that sentimental knife spot. This will be with me for a long, long time. So thank you very much. Absolutely love this. We had some people pop in as I was talking about this. Uh, we'll go back and see. We got Cheeto, Cheeto Montana, 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 Cheeto Montana. What's up, Cheeto? Welcome in. Stevie, Stevie's in the house. Did I miss what Steve's snack is tonight? Uh, my snack is on its way. My snack is on its way. So I had a snack delivered today and not so much delivered as I ordered it. And someone else is going to get the exact same snack and they're picking it up and they're bringing it back for me. So I may have to take a, a quick pause and go grab my snack in a little bit and bring it back in. But uh, my snack is on the way for tonight. Sharp guy. Thanks for swinging by. See you in here. It's awesome to have you in the house. Uh, Mayor Salt, what's up? Thanks for coming by. We got Todd Carr in the house. Uh, Pretty Flies in the house. Let's see. We got a couple other in here. We already said hi to Cheeto, but Cheeto, we'll say hi again. So great to have you in here. We've got Maddie's in the house. Bonjour. Bonjour, Mervoui. I don't even think that's how you actually say stuff, but... Um, I know how to sing Farrah Jaca. That works. I'm not going to do it, but I know how to do it. And then I saw Steve Carr. Joseph S. Tactical Terry. Todd Carr. Steve Clur. Todd Carr. There are so many people in here. I just want to say thank you. I'm not going to keep up with all the names because I'm really bad at this, but I think I've said hello to everyone. If I haven't, I apologize. What is up, Oreo Dave? See you in the house right there. Good evening, my sir. Nice to see you. Terry, butt delivered. We live in the future. Terry's butt was delivered today. My son has a book. And it's all about butt cracks and it's about this kid and he's like looking in the mirror, the book for a toddler about a toddler who looks in the mirror and he realizes his butt has a crack. So he needs a new butt. And the whole thing is about him trying to find a new butt. My three-year-old knows the book so well. He opens it up and he sees the very first page and he goes, oh no, my butt has a crack. I need a new butt. 
and now he loves saying that to people. So it's uh, it's something we live with now. <laughs> it's a good book, huh, Maddie? It's a fantastic book. Kyle, I don't know why you have that book. Kyle, I feel like you just have that book because you have butt books. But yeah. Pacific Northwest is treating well, Goondocks. How's the Pacific Northwest treating you? I don't know if you're even talking to me about that. Uh, link to the book. Uh, I don't know if the book's on Amazon. I can go ahead and look for it. See if it is on Amazon. If it's on Amazon, I will 100% put a link to it for you. But uh, if it's not on Amazon, I'll find something. Note to self, don't just search Amazon for... new butt book actually you can search amazon for i need a new butt and it pops right up it's called i need a new butt there's also one called i broke my butt we don't have that one this is the book it's great for kids also for people who are north of 30 it's just it's just fun for all ages it's a lot of fun just for all ages so yeah kyle likes to have an approachable anatomy book on the coffee table <laughs> <He's come over. laughs> it's a nice coffee table piece sheesh don't judge me uh tactical terry that's a very it's a very <laughs> way to put that I prefer Google's show me that, but yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to stay away from that one. I'm just going to be honest right now, but ever read everybody poops. That's a classic. Yes, we have everybody poops. There's also everybody poops in the woods. And then there's also what poop is in the woods. And it's about uh, dissecting and um, identifying different types of scat that you find. Yeah. Maddie does need to read us some pages from buttception. I sent Maddie a link. So if Maddie wanted to jump up here, Maddie could follow the link and come up here and read us some books. But, you know, I, I'm starting to think Maddie may not know how to read, which is why he hasn't read us the book. That might be the case. Uh, I think Maddie might not know how to read. That's why he hasn't read us the book. It's okay, Maddie. I can teach you how to read. I can teach you how to read, and then you could read us the book. And that's why I'm here. I'm here to be your friend and teach you how to read. I'm not only really good with knives i'm a great teacher so satisfaction i'm gonna teach you how to read tonight is school night we're gonna take you to school and teach you how to read so you can read buttception to us that's uh that's kind of what my life goal is now is to teach you how to read i true it's true migrants is only stifled by the mere thought of hot dogs i'm sorry palmer Reading is hard. Reading can be hard for a lot of people. Power is out. I'm on a dying laptop and a hot spot here on borrowed time. That does sound like borrowed time for sure. You don't have much time left at all. You've got uh, a little bit. Mind of Milton's here. I just saw mom everywhere and I was like, I didn't see Mind of Milton. What is up, Mind of Milton? Thanks for swinging by. Sup, sup. Sup as in stand up paddleboard or sup as in what's up because i'm assuming it's the second one um but every time i see sup i just think a stand-up paddleboard um yeah but i know that's not it so i should just stop thinking about that i'm just, I'm just we're just gonna shoop, put that down now no more thinking about it but how you doing mina milton glad to have you in here i read gooder every day that's uh you do read gooder every day um, we're going to work on some of those consonants, though. Maddie's only made it to page four before. <laughs> yep, very true, Steve Claire. Very true, very true. <laughs> Did I catch a niner in there? Cool. All right, so... Uh, I also have something that I wanted to unbox today. It came in yesterday and it was something that was kind of fun. We're going to box it in a little bit because we're going to talk about stuff. I'm really kind of just looking at my phone, waiting for my snack to get here because I want my snack. 
because snacks are the best but um let me know when Dylan gets back all right midday who is reading archie and jughead oh what is he reading archie and jughead not who is reading see i need to learn how to read too I can say it, Maddie. Came say the C word. He wouldn't let me read a single sentence out of exception. I can say the C word. Climax. I said it. Said it. Feel dirty. Feel dirty and gross, Maddie. Ugh. But I said it. So there, Maddie. I said the word. Now I can teach you how to read. So there. We'll start with Archie and Jughead. That was Jay. Nice to see you, Jay. What's up? That was Jay's suggestion. So we'll start you with Archie Chuck. Ooh, I'm telling. You can't tell anybody. Principal went home for the night. So no one to tell. So there. Yeah. That wasn't the C word, Kyle. We were talking about a different one. It's a butt within a butt within a butt. What's up, Midnight? It was kind of anticlimactic if you talk. Think about it. <laughs> It's just Kyle. We just we just really enjoy Kyle for who he is. There's a song. It's um I'm not gonna say it. I'm gonna get made fun of. Okay, no, it's all right. So I listen to music, and there's a song from a dude named Joe Jonas. I don't listen to it all the time. I just listen to it sometimes. Really, it's my wife's music. She listens to it along with Taylor Swift. I don't listen to Taylor Swift, but um. And uh, there's a song called I Want Somebody to Love Me for Who I Am. That's how we feel about you, Kyle. We love you just for who you are. So you just keep doing that. More butts and butts and butts. That's all we're getting back to. So, yeah. It's so much more than that. See, I think Maddie secretly does know how to read because he's hinting that he's read some of it and that he's gotten into it. But uh, at the same time, who knows? Am I a Swifty, Mind of Milton? I mean... I'm pretty fast. That's what you're asking. I'm swift. Swifty. I'm swifty. Can't stop me. I'm gonna go fast. You gotta see me going through the past. I'm pretty swifty. Um, yeah, I'm a swifty. Straight through and through. Actually, this is a little known fact about me and Taylor Swift. We have a history. There's a song called Hey Steven, and I have no proof that this happened, but... I will tell you, she wrote that song about me. I have no proof it happened, but I will tell you she wrote that song about me. And you'll probably believe it because, I mean, who wouldn't believe it? Because, yeah, that's amazing. And I'm amazing. So that's when I became a Swifty. She wrote a song about me and she was like, yeah, I think you're a cool dude. And I was like, I am a cool dude. Thanks for writing a song about me, Taylor. I call her Tay Tay sometimes, but that's only like our little thing. Don't tell Travis about that. He's bigger and stronger, but I'm faster and I've got less Super Bowls than he does. What's up, Mark Parks? How you doing? Nice to see you in the house. Enjoying the night with us. And earlier I had to do video captures so my therapist will understand. <laughs> just, just invite your therapist to watch with you. <laughs> like, hey, if you really want to know what's going on in my life, just come watch this. Fun fact, Hall & Oates also wrote a man-eater about work-night balance. It's very true. It's a very true story. Um, I've had many songs written about me. The two most famous are Hey Steven by Taylor Swift and Man-Eater by Hall & Oates. Um, yeah. It's just who I am. I told you, snacks are on the way. Actually, you weren't here, Mindy Milton. I apologize. Uh, snacks are on the way. I ordered a snack tonight because I wanted to make sure that I had a good snack for tonight because I'm really enjoying tonight because I don't work tomorrow. So I'm going to kind of just relax, have a long night with y'all, enjoy myself and, um, have some sweet snacks. So the snack is on its way. I'm guessing Carly Simon's you're so vain must be about you now too. no. Mm -mm. No, that one's not about me. No, I wish, but that one, that one sadly is not about me. I think that one might be about Sharif. 
I think that one might, I think I heard that somewhere. But yeah. So, <laughs> I thought Nelly Furtado cover was for work knife bones. It could have been. You never know. We could list all the songs that are um, about me, but there'd be too many. So, yeah. It'd probably be easier to list the songs that aren't about me. It's Taylor Swift singing when the dog drives, but... <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that's true, but if it is, I mean... You Taylor Swift all you want, Todd Carr. You Taylor Swift all you want. Oh, I just realized you can see that shadow right there. Okay. New, whoops, new game. Based off of this shadow right here. What knife? Oh, you can see the tip right there. What knife am I opening? Hmm? Hmm? Anybody? If you guess it, you'll be correct. I like Midnight. That's true. Gangster's Paradise was from my perspective. Yeah. Midnight just uh, just laying down truth for everyone. What's up, Night's Edge? Thanks for stopping by, saying what's up. We're so glad that you're in here for a little bit. Enjoy the time that we're in here. We're talking about all the songs that are written about me. Waiting for my snacks to get delivered tonight. But you have a good night, Night's Edge. Appreciate you swinging by just for a little bit even. Nope, it wasn't the 3.25 Harsey. It was a much easier knife to open than that. And it was a button lock. I will say that. You can see it like pop up real quick. Wachow, there it is. And it's gone. Wachow, there it is. And it's gone. It was uh, button lock elementum. It's just easy. I wish I had an FSD. I don't have an FSD. They're really nice and I like them a lot, but they are just a little out of my price range. But I don't need that. I don't need that. I don't want that. I don't like that because I got enough knives that i like man did you hear that oh that sounded good i don't think it comes through in the microphone as good as it is in life but whoo that sounds that sounds so clean oh my gosh that sounds so good it sounds better when you knuckle it over yeah it sounds a lot better when you just kind of. Ooh, that's so nice. It's it's fun to open it like this. I would say it's almost more fun to open it like that. But it sounds, it is so satisfying to hear that. Oh. Oh, Kyle. Yeah, see, Todd, that's what I was thinking. The noise canceling on the microphone. You can't hear it at all. You got to like just kind of. Yep. Nope. I don't I don't know how to get around that. We've been through this. I'm not good. I'm not good at all with technology stuff. Steve, I'm just waiting for my sugar to get here. Um, actually, everybody pause. For just a second, because I think my sugar has arrived. I will be back with my snack. And I'm gonna rhyme in time. You just wait.
I was not expecting it to go as foggy as it did. That is crazy. Oh, 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 oh. y'all are in for a treat. <laughs> there's a there's a little goblin down here. I'm gonna add him to it. You guys ready for this? I guess I'm a goblin. <laughs> I only came on the show. This is already old news. I can't find the first one, but I broke my butt. My butt is so noisy. I had to go find them. I think the first one, maybe Isaiah was reading it, but uh, these are those books you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen the My Butt is So Noisy one. They're all equally good. But uh... our, three, our three year old legitimately has the I need a new butt like memorized and he will walk around telling people like he'll walk up and he'll be like do you know my butt book i need a new butt because my butt cracked and i'm just like oh my gosh please you stop. gotta get the whole set then i know <laughs> but yeah we'll probably order the whole set soon you have to mm -hmm. like i said the first one i think is in their little library in the room but they're sleeping but it's good yeah um Finally got the snack in for the night, though, too. Hey, Kyle, you don't have to be here. No, you can please. leave, Kyle. Please don't. Please don't, Kyle. Please don't leave. What's your snack? I got a blizzard. Yeah. So we got chocolate ice cream with Heath and fudge and Oreo cookie dough pieces. That sounds so good. It's really good. It's... uh. It's one of my favorites, but Dairy Queen had a buy one, get one blizzard for free right now. So I got a blizzard. And my wife got one for free. Turn it upside down. Nope. It's way too melted. <laughs> I can see it. I can see it right now. I like their cheesecake one with the strawberry. Do you get the, the premium one with like the core, like the cheesecake core or the one with the cheesecake pieces and strawberry? The pieces. Me too. I ain't the fancy. I get the regular stuff. The premium one's not even good. They like brought it out and it tastes like poop. <laughs> <coughs> well, how is everybody? How is everybody? I, I, I released my video, but I fixed, thanks to Sharif, my one of my favorite knives. Nice. So it's red with uh, blue on it. That's the one you had to swap the pieces because you were missing the screw, right? Yeah, I went through the wash and uh, that, was, that was the end of it. So it came in two configurations, blue and silver, or gold and red. But I don't know, Gary likes the, uh, the gold. I don't know, I don't like the gold. I like I'm the not a gold fan. Yeah. I saw someone got the gold jig tie penguin, and I didn't like that either. No. Um, what's up, Ground Fog? Ground Fog. We have a. Can you hear the thunderstorm? Is mm -hmm. Stevie still here? Stevie's said he was fading, so he was probably going to go to bed. But I just heard a thunderstorm outside. So we've got a thunderstorms night, which is, I know it doesn't seem like a big deal, but it's a big deal up here because you don't get thunderstorms like you do down in Arizona. Really? I mean, you get them occasionally, but nothing like down in Arizona. Like that was one thing moving up here when people were talking about like rain and storms. I was like, you guys don't know what rain is. And they were like, it rains all the time. I was like, it sprinkles. It doesn't rain. <laughs> Wait till you've been in a monsoon. We've been having a lot of storms lately. Really? Yeah. It's been nice. It hasn't been hot yet. Which normally at this time, sometimes it, it reaches 100 degrees. Yeah. So I'm, I'm cool with it. Keep it coming. I will say Arizona had some of the coolest nights. Because it was so dry, you could see like the lightning through the sky, but it never touched ground. And it was literally like the gods were fighting on Olympus up there. It was so cool. Like this time of year, you just drive and it's just dark. And then you just see, it was, it's one of the coolest things ever. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Milton, you were up here. 
the crap dude. <laughs> you don't even have to move, Oreo Dave. Just come up for a weekend. No, because once you have one brunch with you guys, you're gonna want all the brunches. It's very true. We're we're a pretty addicting group. It was very very frightening. <laughs> mama mia, mama mia. You know, I have one student. He's in uh, like six sixth grade, seventh grade. He has like the worst behaviors ever. Like he destroys things, but as soon as you start singing that song. <laughs> he like relaxes and mellows out. That that's kind of cool. So I, I started singing it to him. So every now and again I walk by, and all of a sudden I hear, "Mama just killed a man." <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, I freaking love it. It's so like a cheat code like, for, for that kid. Your mom was racking up a body count. <laughs> oh, I love it. Gotta get the girls from the airport. Oh yeah, no, you're good. I was kidding. I definitely would have been up at two thirty in the morning. Mm -hmm. I know. I just heard it. I could not imagine. I. This is the first time that we've had some crazy thunder since I've been here. I'll say that. But midnight. Where do you live? Where does midnight live? Let's see. Who was talking about snow? I think. Tactical Terry got stuck. I think Midnight's up in that area. Yeah. That's uh But the Panther kind of uh might narrow it down a little bit. That's very true. Oh, Denver. I was not expecting I mean oh. that makes sense with the snow, not with the Panther. <laughs> that was way off. <laughs> but still. So if I, going, love, I love Bloody Marys. If you're going live today, are you still going to go live tomorrow? I don't know. I'm probably not. No, um, don't. You said don't do it? I said do it. I don't know. I was thinking about because Roll Shambo is doing his big live tomorrow night for 7,000 and he's giving away a knife and some cool stuff and everything. And usually the end of his live butts up with the beginning of when I go on Wednesdays and I would very much like to participate in trying to win a knife from Rochambeau so I'll probably if I do go live it'll be after he ends so it might be a little later but well I hope you win I hope I do too but I know I'm not going to you know what I already won I was bored in the US of A baby <laughs> the <office. laughs> exactly <laughs> I already won the lottery. I'm born in the U.S. of A, baby. <laughs> I was quoting the office to someone at work today, and they had no idea what I was talking about at all. And they just gave me like a blank stare. And I was like, "Have you ever seen the office?" And they go, "Oh, I love the office." And I was like, "Clearly, you don't." Because mm -hmm. That was like a very classic Kevin intro that you missed right there. And so we were going over. Someone was like, oh, we're going to SeaWorld. And I was like, SeaWorld? Oceans, fish, jump, China. <laughs> and then they were like, what? And I was like, see, still don't understand. You want to see the world or do you want to go to SeaWorld? And they were like, what are you talking about? <laughs> that's one of the, that's when they started making Kevin really stupid. But yeah. that's, that's a classic right there. right there. It is. It's so good. Why well, say a lot word when few word do trick? <laughs> I mean, it's not, he's not wrong. I talk with my three year old like that. He says like half the words he needs to sometimes. Fully understand what he's saying. Oh, how the turntables. <laughs> oh, how the turntables have turned. <laughs> I, I love The Office. That was a that was a good show. Yeah, I avoided it for the longest time because everyone's like, "You gotta watch The Office." <clears throat> but I started watching it one day on my phone. I couldn't stop. <laughs> That's also one of my favorites. Sorry, I already promised someone else I would not be good. I promised I wouldn't be on my best behavior. Yeah. Um, my brother-in-law is from right around the corner from Scranton. 
so he refused to watch it because he's from like scranton pennsylvania like that area and um he was like they didn't even film it there that's not what it looks like this is dumb and uh he refused to watch it but he said when before he married my sister all my brothers and sisters love it as much as i do and so we like wrote down the top five episodes that we needed him to watch and he watched it now he's a fan what are what are your top five now you got me curious so if you google like the top five episodes the top five episodes they give you are for enthusiasts of the show i don't think they're the top five episodes to win someone over to the show because arguably dinner party is one of the best episodes not um, like for any sort of sitcom it's arguably one of the best episodes for any sitcom whatsoever yeah. but yeah, if you are bad. not into the office you are going to hate it because you're you're already not into the characters you don't understand the development into it and everything yeah. so we did not have him watch dinner party but now he really does but for me it is um uh the diversity day from okay, season yeah. one when he's talking to kelly oh kelly will we buy your cookie will we buy your cookie <laughs> then she slaps him and now she knows what it feels like to be minority <laughs> <laughs> That's in the early episodes. Yeah, that's uh, we wanted to start early to go through, so we, we tried to choose different um, seasons. So I don't remember. I don't know if I'm going to remember all five of them, but the injury. Yeah, <laughs> the injury is another really good one. But um, we chose Diversity Day. Let's see. We chose the one where Jim, Dwight, and Michael go to. Utica to try and steal the copier from Karen to win back Stanley. Um, we chose Oh, we chose the one where Michael proposes at the um, Indian party that Kelly's having. Mm -hmm. um, and that's actually his wife in real life. Yep, that's his wife. Yeah, the cheerleader. Yeah. The cheerleader is his wife in real life, which I didn't realize that when I was watching it originally. Let's see. Uh, we chose the one we chose kind of based on intros too. So we chose um, the one with fake Jim as the intro where it oh, has yeah. the Asian guy who plays fake Jim as the intro. And then we chose the uh, one where Andy comes to the dinner party with Robert California. And we chose that one specifically for the whole buildup to the very end where they're talking to Kevin about his dog. And he's like, she stinks. She's been there for weeks. She doesn't eat any food. She doesn't lay around. <laughs> they make it play like her, like the dog's dead and Kevin has no idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was another one. The gobble ghoul is another really good episode too. I'll have the gobble ghoul. What? He said he'll have the gobble ghoul. I love that it casually just fried some lady's engine. Just did thousands of dollars of damage. Just went back inside. Uh, your sparker tubes are empty. You're gonna have to get those fixed. I can I can send you to my guy, but I'm more of a I'm more of a motorcycle mechanic. I'm not a car mechanic. Sorry. <laughs> oh, he destroyed her car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that was a. I was going to the Parks and Rec over there. <laughs> That's one of the outtakes. That is in the outtakes. That's, That's one of the best outtakes. Scrubs was an awesome show, too. I liked them all. Scrubs also was really good. Oh, man. I think I got started with The Office. And then I went back and watched Scrubs because Scrubs was only being 35. Scrubs was before my time a little bit. But growing up, I watched uh, Fraser, and I watched uh, Seinfeld, and I watched a bunch of shows with my dad. Parkour! <laughs> then he jumps in the box. <laughs> I like that Michael's still filming. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, when they're trying to get Toby fired after he comes back. So a little bit of Caprese salad. Since when is it against the law to put Caprese salad in a file cabinet? <laughs> Oh man, there's 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 a lot of good shows 
I don't really like much of what's on now, but those shows were good. Parks and Rec, uh, Office, Scrubs. I even watched Frasier. Frasier's probably the least of all of those, in my opinion. Frasier's what made me and Katie want to move to the PNW for the longest time. Years ago. Before I ever met any of you guys. It's exactly realized. like that. If the PNW was the exact opposite of the TV show. Oh. Well, we, every scene was like raining and everything. It seemed nice. It is nice. And then we saw the cost of living. And that's why we're still here. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of the same way to pivot kind of categories and themes and shows we've got a, a special guest tonight as well oh Mando <laughs> we've got Mando Reef here why does his head look so tiny <laughs> <laughs> this is the way. This is the way. <laughs> I wish I, I need a cool helmet now. I got nothing. Come on, man. What's going on? <laughs> Not much. I've got a I've got a balloon animal dog that poops out a balloon. Oh, that's awesome. Nice. Yeah. That. And then I've got a gold peace sign. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. D'Angelo Vickers juggling was the. D'Angelo Vickers, I think it was only two or three episodes that he was in there. But was yep. one of the best like cameos in the in the whole thing. One of the only people in that show to die too. Yeah. <laughs> the other one that we've been watching a lot recently is uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine. Yeah. Best show ever. Mm -hmm. I really like Brooklyn Nine Nine. I think we, we started a little while. Yeah, we started watching because um, the captain in Brooklyn Nine Nine in real life just passed like a month ago or so, so wow. we started watching it again. But midget cartel boss, oh, that's all <laughs> I'm gonna see now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> why I wanna. Oh, I don't even know what to call you. Neither do I. Sarah Lordy, Lordy? I don't know. Mandalorian? Sarah Lorian? Sarah Lorian? This is my true self. <laughs> I should do like Xeno and come up with a new like page. And then this is the only face you see. Do it. <laughs> we talked about I talked about that with someone else. Someone I know wants to create a YouTube channel, but he doesn't want people to know it's him. Mm -hmm. Just put a mask on the whole time. Yeah. Just put a mask on the whole time. And then just never tell people it's you. It'd be easy. Or just don't show your face. Ever. Yeah. It's true. Like watch it's... lots of videos that they don't show your face. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean Sharif. Thank you, by the way. You're welcome. I was lurking. I saw it earlier. I got it back. Oh. All right. That's oh, a lot Kyle. to wear all at once. Oh, my, my phoenix is headed your way, buddy. Oh. I'm going to get a finally get a Kyle sharpening job. Heck yeah. King okay, that's it right there. King Tadalorian. No. Steve, you got it. Mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a good one. Dude, yeah, Brooklyn Nine Nine is fucking phenomenal. Really sad that the captain passed because he's yeah. a phenomenal actor. Like Oh yeah. 
definitely not in the modern era given enough credit for like how how like just flawless he was you know especially in brooklyn 99 yeah it when when he passed i started looking at his like his length of work and what he had done and all this other stuff and there's things that like i had no idea he had done that yeah. just like watching i don't know 20 minutes of him or so it's like wow he was a very versatile actor as well oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. just like incredibly talented great breadth and depth I mean, even like the way he played the character on Brooklyn Nine Nine, he just had the pacing and the delivery, and to use a phrase from the show, the gravitas. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yep. you do. Yeah, man, he he is awesome. And Milton, yes, you do. The knife that's nice enough to send to Kyle is the knife that you like to use all the time. Yeah, exactly. Every knife, budget, premium, they need to be sharpened. Yeah, yeah. dude. Doesn't I just, matter. I, uh, I lost my stones in the move. I was trying to find stones and I couldn't. I mean, they're probably somewhere in a box that I haven't opened, but I thought I've opened all my boxes. So I've been sharpening everything with this and it, it works. Yeah. But that's what I, use. I think that's what Kyle uses exclusively. He does. I've seen I was told that's all Kyle uses. <laughs> anything beyond that, he uh, he sends out for someone else to do. Yeah, yeah, I was told he actually only uses a ceramic rod on the top too. And he that's likes all the, he uses. He likes the bumpy side too. Yeah, he doesn't like yeah. the smooth side. Kyle definitely likes the bumpy side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. No, I mean. Kyle, Kyle uses work sharps. And you know, the, the truth of the matter is, I've been on calls with, with Kyle. I've heard him fire up that Ken Onion electric belted one that just <laughs> convexes everything. So when you get a convex grind from Kyle, you know that's where it came from. Can he, Kyle, can you do a convex grind? <laughs> I would love to have like more blades with convex grinds why <laughs> they're they're fun they're sharp they're fun yeah i mean are they fun though every knife you have is like a 15 degree bevel or a 17 degree but like all mine are 16 actually how many knives like do you look at and you're like that's a convex grind or or <laughs> a scandy grind dude you need to try out like oh god i wish there was this is what drives me nuts like i really wish the customer like yeah. base was more into experimenting like you you are maddie right uh because dude like you gotta experience for example like an emerson v chisel you don't need to buy it but just to like know what it feels like yeah you know? I, I have not tried one of those i have tried chisel grinds and they make the best sandwich slicers. They go yeah. right through. Yeah, absolutely. But I'd love to try the Emerson one. Because I've never heard of a V chisel until you talked about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I learned about it from, from Emerson stuff. So, like, I love, I love it for okay. everything other than slicing cheese. <laughs> It just beats cheese into submission. That's all cheese? it does. You need a full flat grind on cheese. You do. You and a thin slicing knife or a it's hollow a grind super thin knife too. Yeah. It has to be a tall hollow grind though. That it does. That it does. Do you? Do I have any asymmetrical? What? Do you have any asymmetricals? Do you have <laughs> an asymmetrical? Do you have asymmetrical? <laughs> My balls are asymmetrical. One hangs lower than the other. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I have... I have one knife that someone gave me. It's a chisel grind. And then my one ballet song is a chisel. Mm. 
baton and cheese. You know, sometimes you have to when you get like a hard, sharp cheddar. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta. Dude, I've got a, like, but not, actually not me. The chisel. Um. <laughs> My, you know, uh, I don't know if you remember those, like, thin, that thin knife that I showed you a long time ago uh, called the Laguiole. It's like a French knife, right? Uh, my dad I was Russian with that name. <laughs> my my dad has a, a what you call it, um, like a set of those like very cheap ones, but for like kitchen stuff, and he has a full serrated. Uh, what you call it? Full serrated chisel version. Like a yeah, it's for everything. Like it, it's one of those that, like you know, when you've got your fork, knife, spoon, you know, whatever. <clears throat> it's a full serrated chisel. Fork, knife, spoon. Yes, exactly like that. <laughs> <laughs> Which one would you like? Yeah. I need to send a, a set of them to Kyle for sharpening because the serrations are super tiny too. <laughs> and Kyle, I don't have a. Well, okay, so I reprofiled my Spartan Aster, and that might be asymmetrical, but not on purpose. That was the first <laughs> time I ever tried like reprofiling it because that Spartan came dull. It might as well have not had an edge on it. And that was the first time I actually used like the, the WorkSharp Pro system. So that one might be asymmetrical, but not on purpose. Other than that, I don't have anything like what you said. I was going to say I have an asymmetrical knife, but it's the same. It's the same because I tried to sharpen it and it, I didn't do very well. But I have since sharpened many other knives, and they've done much better. Mm -hmm. I see what you practice. You know, everyone should practice on something <laughs> cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's actually pretty fun and relaxing. I, I put on music, mm -hmm. and I just, uh, I was like, I've never reprofiled, so I just went for it. And it was, get uh, yourself a nice red, get some bonbons, put some music on. Yeah. <laughs> see, make it classy. Sit back with some bubbles in the background. Mm. You just have like Eli blowing bubbles in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Scented <Very> candles. <laughs> Katie comes home, just sees me over here. Pink lights on in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Question What's the craziest thing you've ever given your boys for breakfast? Was the craziest thing? Yeah. Like the most, I guess not crazy, the most un adult thing like like the thing that like other adults would be like why would you feed that to your children i don't know i, I think we've done the standard like cake we uh, did we did chocolate pie and, and um we did chocolate pie and skittles for breakfast see, i told awesome yeah and I, I i told someone at work and they were like why did you do that and i was like because he asked for it you know what? On, on on school days, I'm pretty strict. Like, you know, you eat something with fiber. You got to get your brain working. But weekends, you know, we'll have fun. Yeah. See? Um, like, people that don't have kids don't understand how fun it is to have a kid. Especially they grow up and they lose that joy. Like, I don't... never got to have sugar as a kid. So for me, I'm like, I'm going to. This is very much. This is very much a Parks and Rec moment where it's like, man. I would have loved to have an officer let me play with his gun. So if I can make that dream come true for another kid, I'd be like, sure, play with my gun. So like, I never got <laughs> sugar as a kid. If I can make that dream come true for my son, I'll be like, sure, have all the sugar you want. Matisfaction Incorporated does not condone such actions. <laughs> I separate myself from the, from the previous statement. <laughs> you mean like Pop Real Shreven Incorporated gives <laughs> the thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not associated with giving kids guns and saying, have fun. 
<laughs> well, I wouldn't give a kid a gun. I'm saying like there, that's, that's the quote from the movie or the show. I would definitely give a kid sugar though and be like, here, have some sugar. It's so great. <laughs> I'm gonna open this. Do it. Do it. I know what it is. I haven't seen it yet, obviously. But I'm getting, I'm getting a scary package tomorrow, I think. I'm opening it with, I'm opening it with this. This thing is awesome. It's called the Scorpion. It's got a cool name. Yeah. Ooh, Count Count Chocula is one of my favorites. We've got we've got Dragon Ball Z uh Reese's puffs right now. Nice. That's pretty cool. I just got some more Captain Crunch with Crunch Berries. That's my favorite. Yeah. I literally forgot what I was going to look up. I got a thank you note. It might have been. I got a thank you note, and that's all that it was, is a thank you note. You're welcome. Yes. Ooh. I like this a lot. Are this they awesome? Out so good. What? Are, isn't it awesome? It is. I have the blue one. Um, the blue one has the like pen thing up at the top here. And mm-hmm. I wanted one with the pen on the side. And so I think this one is going to be the one I use more frequently. Nice. I think I'm going to take the blue one to work with me. I got it with the Easter code. So I was pretty excited. Palmer, oh, that's not a school that. lunch tray. Well, I mean, it was, but that is a Lancelot leather valet tray. Valet tray. Mm-hmm. You can that's see that right there. Handcrafted leather placed upon it. And, and uh, if you see like people's pocket dumps with it, they're cool. There's different colors. Lots of different colors. There's a couple moderators in here. If somebody wants to find the EDC roundtable link and throw it in there. Put that in there. I'm charging my my mouse right now. Otherwise, I would search, but my mouse is dead, so I can't actually like move anything around my screen. Midnight ban. I'm just <laughs> thumb studs. I'm just stop being things. Truth hates thumb discs with a passion. Oh, you know, it's only because <laughs> I have like fucking ten of them. <laughs> <laughs> It was so funny earlier. Uh, Barbarian Brawny was sending me some pictures, and I sent him a photo of like the my latest design that I'm working on, and just jokingly because he knows about my rivalry with Palmer, he was <laughs> like, "Why didn't you put thumb studs on, or thumb discs on it?" <laughs> I turned around, I picked up my phone, I went mm-hmm. to my of emerson's my trusola like my fucking uh alliance designs crack and i was like come join the dark side <laughs> it's this 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 and i started like shaking the camera <laughs> more and more. <laughs> it's awesome yeah man i have um, a man. i have a half dr- i have a half drawn uh idea that i need some help with because i reached out to i reached out to a um company uh i don't want to say it out loud but i'll put it in the private chat but i reached out to a company and um i'm skeptical and i'm being very careful on what i send them just from what i've heard from other stuff too and so I sent like some pictures and then they asked for like all the measurements and stuff like that. And I was like, well, here's the blade length and here's the concept of the knife and here's why I designed it type thing. Yeah. And that was uh, Friday, last Friday um, or Saturday that I sent it over. They reached out Friday and Saturday I sent it over. So I'm waiting to hear back from them and see what, but I have a third, I sent them two designs. Mm-hmm. I have a third one that I'd like to finish. And um, you have something you have a fixed blade similar um, that you designed a while ago, I think. Yeah, a drawing that you showed um, of a fixed blade that you had okay. similarly. This guy? Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, and, uh, like, if anyone looks at my knife, 
they're gonna 100% realize that like the thing that it is designed after is a Utsler duck. It's designed after a Utsler duck 100%. Okay. And um, I've just put my own tweaks to it, but sure. I want to design it with, and I've never done this on, I want to design it with this like tactical stop pin on the backside. Yeah. Because I want it to be more of a like full on tack knife yeah. rather than a like pretty grail knife. Um, I want it to feel like this. Yeah. And not like this. Like this, I love. Um, both of them have their own place in a collection, yeah. but I want it to feel like something you can take out and use like this. And so um, I've just never designed anything chunky like that. And so I wanted to get your help on one drawing because yeah. you've seen Maddie's drawings and Maddie's drawings. My drawings make Maddie's drawings look like Picasso. Dude. First of all, don't ever worry about that. For sure. Uh, and second of all, like, so I'll, I'll definitely like private you kind of tell you my advice on like how to approach the companies. Cause like, okay. um, it, it's not because it's some great secret. It's just more because like, I don't want to dominate the stream, you know, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Palmer, Perzola, real status. Okay. Real Perzolas have thumb discs. That's right. <laughs> Just saying. But, anyways, actually, it's not a real Perzola, it's a CKF, but close enough. Anyways, just need to clarify for the young gun. Is that the poop from the dog? <laughs> <laughs> it's a wow. it's a level that I have. Oh. Funny story, my brother in law was putting up shelves and he was like, Do you have a level? And I was like, How big does it need to be? And he was like, like maybe three inches at the most. And I was like, ah, oh, sorry, I got a one inch level. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, Why would you even ask? And I was like, I you. have a level. I have a level. Like just not the best. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so I, I, I did want to touch on, uh, I made notes a while ago on kind of what are the qualities of what constitutes like an American style tactical knife. Mm -hmm. you know? Um, so generally speaking, generally, this is not like the end all be all, uh, and particularly like what I'm sure you like about the Harsey, right? You have tactical style construction, so you've got a large stop pin that the blade is, it's what's called like a shouldered stop pin. So you've got that guy yeah. right there that the blade rotates into and impacts, right? That generally leaves like a little nubbin that everybody ends up thinking is a front flipper when it's not. Mm -hmm. um, but that's one part of it. Another part of it is you tend to go thicker blade stocks. So we're talking like 15, whatever, uh, hundredths or thousand, uh, 150 thousandths, you know, kind of blade stock thickness. I can't American well. Um, <laughs> Kyle. Uh, they generally tend to be titanium with standoffs almost like categorically actually uh very rarely good night steve claire good night steve claire good night steve claire uh very rarely I will meet that man one day yes and i will hug that man and i might not be wearing clothes <laughs> i'm definitely giving him a butt squeeze <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, they generally have standoffs mm -hmm. and two other things. They have um, no internal milling, which yeah. adds to their sort of like heft and feel. Mm -hmm. And generally they have an external stop, right? So like on the Harsey, the pivots, an external stop on something like a hinder or a strider. 
they use the external disc like that. Yeah. So those are kind of like the the things that they think about. Oh, and there's no contouring. They're yeah. they're two D machines. So like they're put on a, a CNC and think of it just being like flat or like a planer or whatever, and then they just mill the shit, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, But yeah, those are the, uh, yeah, Palmer, it, it's the traditional American tactical uh, construction approach that was kind of pioneered by Bob Trezola. So. I carried this one today, actually. Nice. I don't have a RC or anything, but this is a, this is a worker. Yes, it yeah. is. I can open all kinds of lightly taped boxes with this bad boy <laughs> uh midnight trizola definitely still puts his name on his pocket clips yeah dude the, you see you can see a lot of the same qualities in that zon and so I, was, I, was, I pulled it out to look but and then uh palmer just said has the Zon has external stop disc, and you've got the CRK right on that stop disc right there. I'm yep. um, pulling it through. Yeah, so there, there's like a how good the easiest way for me to describe it, like in modern terms, there's like a meta to like different styles of knife, and the American like tactical knife meta are like those kind of things. You can almost go down like a fucking checklist. It's yeah. kind of fun. <laughs> yeah another thing that i that i told myself i was going to do this year too is enhance my usa collection because mm -hmm. um, i i have so many not that it's bad um usa can't touch the market when it comes to production knives we just can't in 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 the cost like the the i'm not saying the quality is not there but the cost like we just you're not yeah. going to get the same value from a usa production knife that you will from a like chinese production knife you just won't because the chinese production knives they're making them so much cheaper even by the time you ship them over here you're getting so much more for your money um, yeah. but uh there are some really good quality usa knives that i'm i've been trying to kind of like enhance my usa knife collection and i was like man i've only got a couple and then i and i started thinking about it i was like oh actually i've got quite a few spiderco and benchmade um that are all usa and i just to that just totally like slipped my mind for some reason but well because there, there's two tiers of america right 100 like, yeah like i would say on the value there's only two brands that i feel fully deliver on the value proposition and that's crk and koenig right mm -hmm. like if you can get a koenig at like actual koenig prices like 600 or below 700 you know i think you're in in a really good place right um the what the quality you get for the money is phenomenal crk tolerances build quality absolutely out of this world for the money mm -hmm. you know uh, but like strider totally not value for the money you're buying it just because it's a strider yeah like, realistically like these things cost for like a slab of titanium and g10 and like lock stick like hellacious lock stick you're paying more than a chris reeves you know yeah. Which is <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah. What were you saying, yeah. Maddie? Oh, nothing. Tonto's uh, question is a definite yes. Then uh, for American Tonto. Yes, that was yes. all cold steel. That's, That's where your value is, cold steel. I was just about to say that, like Maddie would second this, but like value for money, cold steel is like, especially in the American market, hard to beat. Yeah. They used to, they used to like advertise like they were mall ninja knives. 
Mm -hmm. when you buy them, those knives would last you forever. Yeah. They're they're triad lock, always self adjust, so even a hundred years later, it's still gonna be just as strong. That's awesome. Yeah. The only thing I don't like about cold steel most of the time are their pocket clips. Yeah. Are they just like 440 steel? The clips? Yeah. Oh, they're just steel. basic and just basic, basic and stainless. ugly. I mean, they're, they're not meant to be fancy. No. They're meant to be cheap to keep the price down. I get it, but sometimes they're really stiff. Oh. But see, like that, that, that was a $500 knife, and like the pocket clip is just a. Uh, stamp some steel and slap it on there but you know what's funny though is like that is also another signature of the american makers man they they do that like yeah, very basic i know <laughs> once you have the taste of milled titanium clips mm -hmm. like you're 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 grazioso you know like designed and contours with the knife but that's why you have like Lynch Northwest areas where you can go get really nice, still American made, American companies, aftermarket yeah. stuff. Um, I think tomorrow with my day off, I'm going to do something that I've wanted to do for a long time. I started it earlier tonight, but I'm going to, a lot of the like <clears throat> knives that I have, I put in like these like mental categories of like, that's a compact, that's a mini that's uh like the like that's a full size that's an average it's a premium based off of um like blade lengths and overall lengths and stuff but i think i'm gonna create just like a little list for myself mm -hmm. and then have it on like some of my videos to where it shows like hey this is a compact we're gonna be looking at a compact knife if you don't know what a compact knife is for my video feel free to check the link below here's what i think a compact knife is but then also categorize knives by like this is a production knife and what that means on my videos is this is a knife like that was mass produced in the range of this much to this much this is a budget production this is a premium production type and go through like hey we're gonna look at this that and the other S something that i think we'll see how it does but um i was watching a video i forget who it was and they just like the first Five minutes of their video they, they went into like hey if you watch any youtuber and they tell you they don't care about people watching their videos they're wrong you don't make content for nobody to watch it like you make content hoping people are gonna watch it and sure. yeah i mean it was very true and i was like you're, you're right you want people to see your content that's why you make it um and if you can make the content easier for people then that's nice yeah no that's fair that's very fair. Uh, oh, what I was going to say real quick, I, I just wanted to circle back real clip, quick onto the pocket clips. And it's funny because Bushcraft Rebooted mentioned that. Mm -hmm. You know who is the biggest gangster in the whole American made nice pocket clip game is uh, Hinderer. Hinderer. Yeah, Hinderer. You know, you know <laughs> where is he? Where is he? <laughs> Because, uh, dude, you know how much that guy charges for a replacement pocket clip? $45. $45 is the starting price. I was, I was close with $40. Yeah. There, most of them are fifty between $50 and $85. Yeah, but if you use code LEFTY10, you get 10% off. Yeah. <laughs> And if you I've, know, I've started him. using code Lefty Ten at every website I go to. Like ninety percent of them say like this isn't a valid code. I'm like, ah, snap. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna find I'm, I'm I'm gonna find like some affiliate link that Lefty doesn't even know he signed up for. <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. And Todd, that's true. But some of them, I've had some that were so stiff I couldn't get it in my pocket. Oh, really? Dang. Yeah. I remember there was one. I had to do the pennies trick to get it pennies to work. Trick. Yeah, what's that? Yeah. Oh, you slide like one or two pennies under the pocket clip and let it sit for like a week or two. Oh. Right? Stretches it out, gives it enough spring. So when you get Never a really that. tight clip, it works. 
I I do. Do. Yeah. I usually put like a screwdriver under there and just like pry it up and bend it back. And then oh, this, it's like, this and then it's like it. I was going to say, and then it's bent out of the way and, it, and then yeah. it doesn't work. No, the do the, do the pennies and let it sit for like a, a week or two. And then it's it smart. gives it a little bit of spring to it. I need to do that with this flashlight because this pocket clip is so tight. I literally cannot get it onto anything. That's a bright it's, little light. It is, which is why I really dig it. It's like at least four or five hundred lumens. I don't remember, but like it's a nice light. But every time I've got to like jam on the, the switch mm -hmm. or like flip it up. So I'm not like putting a ton of pressure on a small little sensitive piece of electronics. Yeah. And the thing never goes into my pocket. Like I can't even get it on a thin strap of like a, a sling bag it's hmm. miserable yeah hmm. so i'm gonna try that pennies trick man that's actually yeah. awesome Let it sit for a little while hell yeah yeah kyle what kind of ice cream are you eating real quick can i get people's opinion on something yeah i asked it in our little group and i'm thinking about doing a phoenix v2 yes mm -hmm. But changing the blade shape to something. Yes. Really... Okay. Well, your first one sucked balls. <laughs> I really like the first one. I just I hate when V2s come out and it's like, hey, here's a V1 and here's a V2. What'd you do? We changed the material and we oh. added jimping, and like that's it. Like, change the ergos, change something, make it different. Ooh. So the black in the background is the original. Yeah. And the blue would be like the new. Uh, the recurve is accidental. <laughs> but I kind of I kind of dig it now that I look at it more. But I don't know. Something a little different. But it still fits in the same handle. Because I really like the handle. Would you have that little. My finger disappears when it goes over there. So I can't touch your screen. But would you have that little part right there still? The, the like fuller hole area yeah but i would change the shape of it okay because the original one contours with the blade yeah but i kind of have like it's more rectangular triangular mm -hmm. i don't know we'll see I'm, I'm toying with it i think it looks good but I, maybe this is a shape that people would like more and it would be m more of a defined bolster yeah instead of the swirl it's like straight yeah I don't know. I tried drawing it closed, but I, I kept screwing it up, so ignore that part. <laughs> so, I think for one one thing I'll say, Maddie, is like... Raise the tip? Yeah, raise the tip, and you have a little bit more length. So, if you were to draw like a vertical line from where the tip of the Persian is, that's kind of like your limit of how far you can push the tip forward. Right here? Yeah. Like, draw it so, this way? Yeah, do just like a vertical line from like the tip of the Persian blade, like just up and down, you know, and you can actually extend the tip of your blade out to that point. One thing I did, like Todd said it a while ago, is people like it when the tip is in line with like the whole knife. So I kind of yeah. just <laughs> up with the, with the whole thing. I don't know. Yeah, that, that's something. Maybe you, could, maybe you could help me with that a little bit. I'm just I toying with it. So, like, that's something I do. If you look at, like, the tip of the Kaimano, mm -hmm. it, it aligns with the center line of your fist. So, it's it's predictable for when you're kind of, like, you know, stabbing and thrusting, you know? Um, yeah. But that's Shreep not... The door. <laughs> yeah. That's not necessary, per se like so uh, raise this angle so it goes up a little higher yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> it is yeah exactly shark guy <laughs> but you can also go low like you can let the tip droop too so you got options well that would shorten it it would you don't want a droopy and short you want it raised and long 
I don't know, man. Droopy and short is kind of nice. <laughs> well, Bushcraft said I like the recurve, but nobody else has said anything, so we'll see. Recurve the world. I'm gonna ask tomorrow. As I'm well. in. I'm indifferent about the recurve, <clears throat> but I do like the blade shape. I think. Well, I meant the whole. Yeah, the blade shape. I, I'm indifferent on whether or not the recurve's there, though. Is what I'm saying. Like the blade shape in general is is really nice. I think if it was less steep of an angle, I would like it more. But that's because I haven't seen it. Like if I see it drawn out with a less steep angle, I may hate it and I'd be like, nope, this is this is the choice. Well, I printed out a bunch of uh, a bunch of them so I can keep messing with it. Nice. Yeah. So I've been having fun just trying it and then still working on my other one. All right, talk amongst yourselves. I'm gonna go get my drawing real quick. A reverse clip point. <laughs> Knife clips you. <laughs> Match the length. Yeah, I think I get it. Like, not so steep. Have it kind of go out a little bit more. Yeah, a little bit. Like, it, we're, we're talking, like, maybe, like, a few millimeters or an eighth of an inch. Or, I had a yeah. drawing, I think, where I did that. And I don't know. I have, to, I have to find it. You were just talking about knives, so I thought I would just throw, throw that out there. I like getting oh. opinions. Absolutely. You know I love talking about this stuff. Me too. Uh, once you become a designer, you know, just all you want to talk about. A reverse hawk bill. I, I, you know, I show people this too. I'm trying to work on a hawk bill, but my drawing skills don't let me. But I'm trying. I got a reverse hawk bill for you. It's too pointy though. Way too pointy. But yeah. Okay. I'm trying. And look, look, since you said my drawings were better than yours, I mean, there's there's the Orion V1 right there. <laughs> That's how it started. This is this is the first and only drawing I have of of this design and this is, just gives you an idea of what's in the in my mind, but look it upside down. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, dude, I like it. I'm not sure what's going on so in that area. Yeah, ignore right there. ignore that line right okay. there. Ignore that line right there. I draw in pen because I don't have pencils. So then when I draw a line and it stays there forever, I have to kind of like erase it in my head. Yeah. Well, <laughs> dude, here. Uh, I, do, I do the same. Look at all the lines yeah. I got going on. Exactly. I get it. I get you, it. You want to do something a little fun. We can do this right now in the live if I can find my. Ah, there it is. Hold on, a a double. <laughs> Hold on a second. Cheeto, he should show off his design because yeah. his stuff's looking nice. And if you guys are following Blessed Knives, you'll see one of them there. And then yeah. Aries Knives has another one. Two completely different styles. Uh, Steven, how about. You pull that up real quick, but full screen yourself. Okay. And be naked. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hold on, let me get a screenshot. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, full screen yourself and then hold up your sketch. Oh, my yeah, one day you'll learn that ra raspberry chocolate chip is amazing. And rum raisin is also equally amazing. All right, I got it. Did you hear that? He just stole your design. Did you hear that? <laughs> I know. I'm a, I'm a bastard. So I'll hold that up real quick. Let me uh, take a, a gander. <laughs> so the scale kind of looks like a feather. What you got going on there? Um, it's a, it's a contour on the center line that comes off the edges okay so like not a true contour because it wouldn't be it would almost be like a like a like a pyramid milling i guess so you'd have a top part and then it's milled down as it as they go backwards as like a chevron milling coming back but that top line would be kind of just raised out a little bit to feel contoured i don't know it's hard to explain 
what I like about your knives is uh, you, you always have that cool stuff like the Rango and the cool designs on there. I like it. God, yes, do it. So, we can do a little bit of this. And just... Look, you can see my thumb. <laughs> can you put that inside of a butthole? <laughs> I can. I meant the thumb, not the knife. I don't recommend it. Shreve <laughs> showing you had a keister carry. <laughs> I usually close mine first. Shreve, he, he's just, he's he's a daredevil. Oh, yeah. Just going straight for it. Closed knives is for bitches. Look, he's just drawing casually. Yeah, it's... Shreve makes it look so easy. Mm -hmm. I worked on this for like four hours. Shreve's going to have all design in like ten minutes. Yep. You pissed it. I mean, I paid a lot for my education, so I, I better... Can you pay for mine? <laughs> uh, nope. I'm broke because of my education. But... Don't worry. Um, Biden's gonna forgive the educations of everybody. I well, if he has to stay in office for that, I don't know if I want the forgiveness. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that's the trade off. Yeah, right. Uh, let's do that. You erase part of it. Okay, I'm, it'll come back. I'm Just... gonna bring it back. Yes. The yeah. crazy thing is, as you're doing that, I'm like seeing it happen on the paper too. How do you control that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So let's do That's this. That's a good joke, Maddie. <laughs> now, <laughs> with this, I'm gonna transition this a little bit more. Okay. Just a little bit here. Just a then, little. Oh. Let's do this. Let's bring this a little bit more. While you doodle, I have two confessions to make. Uh -oh. First I one, <laughs> I, I like The Weeknd. He's a pretty good singer. Mm -hmm. The second one is I hate country music. And after yeah. the grand reveal, there was this country dude who did a cover of Blinding Lights from The Weeknd. Mm -hmm. And it sounds so good. <laughs> It's, it's almost like Blinding Lights was written as a country song. So now you now you like country music? Slow, slow down, son. Slow down. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just, it sounds so good. Mm -hmm. Like, I like Blinding Lights. It's a good song. I jam to it. But the country version, if this were my live, I'd play it. Play a little bit of it. Because I, I never have really my stuff, but I don't know how to add music and, and pictures and all that stuff and everything. It's a. Uh, I, I thought you my, used our stream yard. I, I did too. And then I logged on and I wasn't there. So I, then I just bought my own. Oh. And then, and then I went and looked at the brand thing and I was like, oh, I got to add all this stuff. So I used what they had there. So I have a song that they have. And then I added this. But that was the only thing I was able to add. Yeah, just download pictures and make stuff, and then you can add it. And then find find songs that you like. I got a lot of mine from YouTube itself. There's a creators corner in the studio. Yeah. And a lot of the songs, just look for the ones that are like unlimited license or whatever it's called. Okay. You can use it for anything without. I, I choose the ones that where you don't have to uh, like list who wrote it. That's nice. Yeah, because sometimes I'll forget. Yeah. But that's what I was looking for, is trying to find something. But I did it at like 9.02, and I was like, oh, crap. I said I was going to be on at 9.15. <laughs> Midnight. Uh, I have family from Texas. I've listened to a lot of country. It ain't my jam. Quite literally. I love jam. Jam is delicious. Mm -hmm. 
I'm more of a preserves guy. Like a, a really nice butter and jam on a biscuit. Mm. Work nice from England. Yeah. All right. So this is just like a quick, like no details mm -hmm. version of it. Let's do this. <laughs> so something like this. Cheerio, puppet. Hello, puppet. <laughs> This is the the general sort of feel. So uh, I would... it doesn't have all the details you want, and mm -hmm. we'll, we'll put those in. You know, yeah. But just uh, working on the silhouette kind of feel of the knife. Now, one couple of things that I did do mm -hmm. uh, intentionally is the intensity of the curve right here i don't know if you can see my my cursor that like circle yeah, yeah i can okay so i i intentionally uh, softened it yeah softened it because like it can get a little uncomfortable if it's so intense that was uh, my thought like after looking at more i've i've you, looking at more knives you see more how how soft it is and then yeah. you see that like chamfering high there. And I think yeah. I was just the way, but I like that a lot. So thank Not you. Not all of them. Yeah. Like you That's can do. Nine. This one's so comfortable. You yeah, but it's different. Something like that, or you could even do um, something where you do, like you could come here and do like your chamfering kind of like this mm -hmm. can, you, can you do like blue with red ghost flames on it i could that'd be sweet you know so you, you have options. Oh, red red's a stupid color here's <laughs> <a stupid> color <laughs> so now for some of the details that you wanted right you did want a sort of uh curve here Something for man, I just had a knife out too. Oh, that's what it was. Chat like kind of died. Like this. Yeah, I figured that was your your intent, like a thumb rest position. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, we can do something like that right here. And sure, if you're good at drawing, I'm okay. Like, like not even like at, with, like you're drawing with a computer. You know how much harder it is to draw with a computer. It's just a lot of pretty cool, a lot of practice. Yeah. Oh, Brian's here. What up, Brian? There you go. So now we've got that in there. Another oh, yeah. thing you notice, I kind of took out this curve. Mm -hmm. We can bring that back, actually, if you'd like. One thing I want to check about that first, though, is if we go back here, let's let's rough in our, our circle. Yeah. yeah. Are you using a mouse or like a, a pen? I'm using this guy. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. I was like, if you do it with a mouse, I was gonna, my head would explode. <laughs> no, mouse is impossible for sure. So what we can do is now, real quick, we can kind of um, do one of these deals. Oh, are you going to cut it and flip it? You know, yep. tuck it in. So what we want to do by doing this is twofold. One, we want to make sure that everything fits. Inside right? the handle, yeah. Yeah. That's and right. Then the other thing we want to do... All right. So actually, we're really good on the yeah. blade-to-handle ratio. Yeah. Uh, I measured. 
So what we actually, let me clean this up. Get that you put like a nice thick backspacer on there too. Well, that would be the dot between the two uh, screw yeah. points. So what we can do for that is we can just kind of put one rough in here mm -hmm. like this. So we know where it's going to be. Mm -hmm. Life not. He makes it look so easy. He does. Like Just that. did that so casually. <laughs> and so you've got, roughly speaking, your circle for your screw head is going to be here. And this one should be, let's move it in just a little bit. So there's a little bit of room at the back end right about there so now this is the other reason that i wanted to check it right mm -hmm. if you look at where your original curve here was it wouldn't fit the blade exactly so what you can do doesn't mean we have to get rid of it mm -hmm. it just means that we have like a limit of like here right the all, I'll, I'll be honest, the only reason I added a curve is because the other two knives I designed have a flat back and I wanted to try and do something different. Yeah, <clears throat> we can accommodate that. We just, like this kind of information is just important mm -hmm. so that like when we, when we do make sure that everything fits, mm -hmm. you know, you've got like a little bit of clearance there yeah so now if we get rid of that guy there you go you can turn it in now that's such a cool looking knife yeah dude it's pretty cool and then what we can also do here do a frame lock is what what i'd put it as so we know that your stomp pin should be let's all right, it should be roughly about here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And so that means you can have like a, a shoulder here. Mm -hmm. And then good positioning for the, actually, let me make sure that this is, there we go. Good positioning for the frame should be about here. Uh, yeah, maybe something like this. And then right about there. So you could do maybe round this a little bit. Is you don't want it to be angular it doesn't match the lines if it's an angular mm -hmm. but have that there blade is gonna kind of come like roughly speaking uh maybe yeah, like that you know and, that that cutouts the lock bar that uh -huh. might interfere with the uh the contouring design he had for the outside and it doesn't have to be contoured it could just be the chevron pattern because like sharif was talking about too if i wanted to have that kind of fit and feel of one of these maybe don't contour it but just add the chevron milling okay well i mean i've not had an idea an inset liner lock that's true like like my uh 350 mm -hmm. then you have two blank canvases but that's the thing if he wants the Canvas eye the if he wants the feel of like an american you know uh what you call it uh an american tactical chunky yeah. frame lock that was yeah. this one that's right okay yeah so Chocolate. we can kind of get an idea Do loot. What's up, loot? Thanks for lurking. There we go. 
What is that ovoid? What the hell? It should be perfect circle. Okay, there we go. So we can kind of have a rough idea. Thing this may need to adjust a little bit, but we can know, roughly speaking, where the detent path is going to go. Just for a quick sketch info, so we can actually beef that up a little bit right around there. And there we go. So now you're getting more of a, an idea. And personally, I don't know, this is a Sharif touch. You may not like it, but I wouldn't mind a little bit of a swedge. Yeah, just yeah. a little bit. 100 percent I, I love a swedge that was the line that i drew on the top as well i just don't know how to draw them i think it just makes the blade look so much better especially if you have like a crowned spine with the swedge coming down like that yeah 100 mm percent -hmm. so throw in a quick little 15 degree edge yeah There we go. Something like that. Yeah, what is the uh, opening for this? I think we had, if I a remember. Thumb stud. Yeah, you had a thumb stud. Yeah, right there. So we can go back here. And this is where things get a little tricky. Because uh, how is it going to hit the path on the yeah which is why i've got it here so generally as a rule for me uh i mean of course you want it to clear this mm -hmm. but from what i've seen <coughs> from here to here is mm -hmm. like around 23 24 millimeters mm -hmm. something like that is generally like a comfortable position but what's more important than that honestly is the positioning when it's closed exactly because you want to make sure you're in a position where it's not too high to pull back or too low to actuate out yeah yeah so what we can also we can do this again one we can see here is this is usually the position where it will hit like it can hit right here but generally that's less of a concern than like right there yeah the, the back side of that right yeah so we see we're clearing that which is good and then if we do this oh another thing that we're gonna look at we should look at right now um is right here you see where the stomp pin is yeah this curve? Mm -hmm. so looks like we're we're close but we're clearing it usually the tolerance for that is pretty tight so we're still good there just i mean especially this is this is a rough end yeah uh but if we do a bit of this Maybe tilt you down just a little bit more. Yep. We bring you down the line here. So what this tells me, right, mm -hmm. is if you look here, like this is fine. You know, like this positioning of the the uh, thumb stud. Mm -hmm. But what you may want to do, right? Well, you will do for lock bar access is you'll have a relief like that. Yeah. Right? So you should be okay. It will be a little tight for the reverse flick. Mm -hmm. But I think that that's fine. Like, so that'll be like your lock bar relief.
and do, 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 kind of transparent uh, knives what is up how you doing what's up brian how you doing brother i am just helping work knife balance with a concept he had kind of uh just doing a rough sketch to kind of get a feel for it but yeah there you go dude that's, that's awesome like just the quick rough really rough sketch but mm -hmm. that should get you kind of going on your way he says rough sketch i would send that out to whoever it was just like that <laughs> <laughs> can you make this <laughs> here's 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 my knife make it <laughs> yes but yeah I, I mean how are you feeling about it like do you, is there things that you would want to change things that you're not liking now that you're kind of like looking at it like what are you feeling do you want i mean there's details for example like um there, if i remember where my shit is like here you had this sharper right yeah we can so, do that i actually don't mind it not as sharp i draw sharp that's just all my knives all my lines i do more straight line sh edges i actually like it rounded but it's easier okay. for me to draw in more straight lines rather than rounding as you can see when i tried to do some of the rounded edges it turned out like poopy so I actually but, like it a little more rounded like that. I don't mind this. Like, I mean, there can be a slight radius here, mm -hmm. but I do like if you're going to do, for example, like you were talk showing a detail where mm -hmm. there's like a, a center line that kind of flowed here. It's nice to have a point to come off of. Yeah, like yeah. if you're going to do something like that where it's like, going through the handle mm -hmm. that having that kind of tip and that can correlate to your uh what you call it to your grind line on your blade so it'll have this really nice long continuous flow from the primary bevel like upper edge all the way back you know yeah yeah that's not an odd question palmer that's a good question i think it's a really good question too palmer I would say, I, <clears throat> I would ask more. I feel like it still feels like my design. Yes. This is more like the concept in my head of what I envisioned and what I would love to see done. I don't have the same skill set that Shreve does. Um, but yes, it still very much feels like my design and exactly like what I envisioned the knife to look like. I envision the, the backspacer like that um to be less chunky and more like to, to have more space not be as close to the blade but that's only because when i look at some knives i see there's a ton of space between that backspacer i also don't know if if a backspacer is the best choice or if you would have like these super fat standoffs like like yeah. that because those standoffs like you said are kind of i didn't even think about that until you said that earlier but those standoffs are kind of that like one of those classifications of that i yeah. personally like backspacers more so i think i would lean more towards backspacer with my design rather than a standoff and kind of go through it i also don't know if some chinese company is going to allow me to not have any sort of internal milling to add weight or if they're going to be like no we have to weigh it down but that no. would, that would be all them I would push for it personally yeah. if I were you, right? Because yeah. like it goes to the feel of the knife uh, and what you're trying to achieve. And mm -hmm. realistically, it saves them money because yeah. they're taking the piece and only milling it from one position. Mm -hmm. They don't need to then flip it over and do another operation. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, but yeah, dude. I mean, I, I personally feel um like i just took what you had and just kind of like tweaked a few lines you know yeah. like 
That looks so good, though. That looks so good. Hey, man. It's I mean, I'm more- obviously, I'm obviously a little bit biased because it's a, it's a design that I like, obviously. But dang, I think it's cool. Like I said, it's yes, one hundred percent. Like all I did, and it, it's it's like when I kind of like when I helped out Maddie a little bit, mm-hmm. he has and the the vision for what it is right mm-hmm. so like all i'm doing is just interpreting what's there you know yeah i don't and have the skills making sure that everything oh that was dumb i did that on the wrong layer <laughs> yeah so see, i just put the the whole grind in there and then <laughs> the wrong fucking place <laughs> derp but yeah, so like, like for me, like I'm I'm trying to do my best not to do any sharifing. You know what I mean? Like, Thanks, crispy. Like, I want to keep it true to your vision, and that's that's even why I'll ask questions like when I'm working with somebody because it's like, like if you don't want a swedge, don't put a swedge, right? Yeah. Like. I put in a straight line here, but clearly you had in your vision, you know, that, that, that back should have had a curve to it. Right. So if I change that, I'm not staying like true to your original concept. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but there's also things that like in the original concept, I fully understand that once you start drawing it out, there's things you may have to change because like I said, that was the, that was the first and really uh, truthfully it was the second drawing but um, yeah. it was like the second drawing of, of what happened so the oh. other thing i'm looking at at a very minuscule and min- like level yeah. is the, the top part of the scale was uh-huh. supposed to be something like this as well with more yeah. of a with more of a uh with more of a, a kind of bit with more of a um like right bend swedge right in exactly yeah and i'm looking at that and i see this which is what makes me really happy because i see that and it looks like the top part of an osborne or something yeah do you so do you (laughs) want this to be a little bit more pronounced no no i like it as is because i don't want it i don't want it to be exactly it's like if you were to take 50 percent of an osborne 50 percent of what i drew there and put them together you'd have a little bit of that but then i don't want obviously an access lock i want it to be a frame lock so i want to have that flat edge on the bottom i want to have a nice indexing point in that finger spot so that's where that came in so one thing i did notice a little bit and i want to do it kind of right now um god damn it i gotta tweak my angle for my wrist here um there we go i noticed that your original edge here was a little bit more like this and so what i'll do is i'll show you what i have in mind here let me bring that in and then do this, go that here, and then so the reason I'm I'm bringing this up is because like your original edge was a little bit more straight yeah like in this section here so i didn't want to uh deviate i like i actually like that because it to me it it makes the blade a little bit chunkier wider chunkier yeah so like we can 
it's more kind of like here and then right about here it starts to swing upwards mm -hmm. you know at a gradual um, angle yeah yeah which i actually really prefer over yeah. what i drew right so you're getting more of a a flat and then the tip mm -hmm. versus you know before i drew it kind of more broad you know mm -hmm. like uh, what am i where's my fucking layer yeah see i did it as more of a continuous curve right yeah. So I think actually that looks a little bit better. It fits the character of the knife a little bit more. Yeah. So. I think it's cool. Yeah, dude. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now we, have, right? we will merge these. Ah. Merge layers. Boom. There you go. There's the design. And there's this guy. Like that. Oh. How you That's feeling about it? I like it. And even here, when you have the uh, the relief, mm -hmm. you're starting to get a bit of that curvature right here back visually you know yeah i think especially once you have you'll have the relief and then you'll have some chamfering on the relief um right to add into it which will add more of that curvature back yeah yeah 100 percent. yeah dude so i can send this to you later that would be awesome thank you sharif yeah. of course okay. of course my pleasure dude i i mean for me this kind of shit is fun you know yeah just to like help out with a an idea you know kind of uh get it closer to what people are thinking of you know what i mean so yeah dude that is awesome that looks really cool yeah my pleasure now i'm, ex now I'm excited now i'm excited <laughs> Pretty sweet. We're gonna have the Phoenix V2, and then we're gonna have the Rango V2 without even having the V1. <laughs> <laughs> well, while he was doing that, I kind of, I think I did what Sharif said. That's it. Yeah, pick it up a little bit. Yeah, it's definitely higher than the other one. Yeah, actually, let me see. Do I have that image? Maddie, I'm pretty sure I do, right? I should. I will say, Maddie, for as many people that like give you guff about your knife, it is a very good knife. They gave me guff. Mm -hmm. The world's just not ready for Persians. Like that scene in Back to the Future. I, I was just going to say, I, I, I just think Persians aren't as popular, but like it's a very good knife. I like it. They'll get popular one day. Mm hmm. And then they'll all come clamoring back. Mm -hmm. Just kidding. So we can always uh, do something like this too. You don't got to do mine. This no. I I was just getting opinions on if I even should pursue it. And would like Kaiser even do a V two like this? Talk uh, to Paul Wang. They may. Yeah, exactly. Talk to Paul Wang. That guy sucks. That guy sucks. Ah, what am I doing here? That's exactly but, where I got uh, my picture from. Yeah. That was yeah. your original drawing? Well, that was the one that uh, Sharif, like, like he did for you just now. Yeah. That right there. Yeah. And then yeah. he went later on and added all the shading mm -hmm. and that's what i knew like it could be a thing yeah this could be it sharif how long did you go to school for art and stuff uh it was in total about five years did you did you go for like art or did you go for design or what did you do so i started in car design 
Okay. And then I switched over to product design. So um, here I can show you some stuff real quick. Uh, and then we'll go back to Maddie's. I have no idea why. Josh. Do, 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 do. Here we go. Josh, work. what's up? I didn't That's even see you in here. Right there. That's Sharif doodling. <laughs> so, like, back when I was in in car design, mm -hmm. um, these were, this was, like, some of my work that I did. Uh, where's my fucking, ah, too many things to open. Here we go. Share screen. So, this was some of my old work that I did back in the day. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is cool. So, uh, okay, yeah. So, let me close this and minimize this. There we go. All right, so my mind is not so crazy. Yeah, so these were small images, but you can kind of get a feel. I'm kind of going for, like, theme sketches for mm -hmm. cars and stuff. Just exploring different sort of, like, lines and stuff like that, proportions. You know. cool. Yeah. And then this, this is all traditional media. So what that means is this is pencil, marker, chalk, and paint. So, and then this is just a blue piece of paper. So cool. this is all chalk and black marker, black pencil, and paint. That's insane. Yeah. Um, this was like 3D modeling. This was like, uh, we call them like speed forms. So this was, me. yeah, just, do you remember Flight of the Navigator? Yeah. This is kind of my interpretation of Flight of the Navigator. Okay. And then this was a watch design I did. Just like learning how to 3D model stuff. Mm -hmm. This is one of my car designs that I did in 3D. That's the final version of it. That's crazy. Yeah. And then what else? Do, 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 do. Yeah, this was my final presentation board. I printed this thing out like almost nine feet across. <laughs> it was actually just like this. That's like, crazy. So I had my different views, the paint colors I selected, like all of this stuff. This thing was like literally like nine feet across. It was awesome. Uh, these were other just support images. I actually made a model of it out of clay. You can see like the evolution of it. Mm -hmm. Painted it. refine the concept. I had that up until I moved uh, out of LA. What happened to it? Threw it in the trash. What? Yeah. That thing weighed a fuck, literal fuck ton. <laughs> uh, and then I started making like robots. This is some of like my graphic design stuff I did back in the day. It's crazy. Uh, let me show you. Ah, God damn it. Okay, can I? Why am I? Damn it. Okay, here, whatever. Fuck it. I I don't have these photos like readily available, so that I've got to go to like fucking my Facebook uh, and find them. Yeah, and I don't use Facebook anymore, which makes it like equally annoying. Yeah. But like the this is like typical presentations that we had to do. Mm hmm. Cool. Those are some of my friends from school. Da, 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 da. Blah 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 blah. You've seen all of this shit. You just taking photos of the fucking stupid car. Some of my friends' cars. I was like, it could be a rover. Yeah. Uh, that thing was super weird. This guy. 
is now the creative director at Bentley. Huh. Yeah. And amazing, amazing guy. Good friend to other cars. Yeah, well, he doesn't have a Sharifasaurus poker chip. So. <laughs> or a Hank. Yeah. yeah. So just a lot of like wild shit that we used to do back in yeah. the day. I never took any of my like photos of my stuff like fully finished, which is real like really upset me. I always took photos of it like mid process, but mm -hmm. mine had tail lights. It had some like nice details and graphics on it. Mm -hmm. I just never took a picture of it. I was too fucking exhausted. <laughs> Oh, yeah, he ate too many pancakes. It's a lot that, of food put into it, though, too. Yeah, that Indian kid there that was flicking off the camera is yeah. starting his own car company. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, uh, I say Ronnie. <laughs> so, this is his company, this is going to be his first car. That's crazy. I can tell by looking at it that I'll never be able to afford it. Yeah, this thing's going to be fucking... I'll buy at least three of them. <laughs> way, way expensive. At least when three. it finally comes out. <laughs> but yeah, he's... Uh... Rotated in with the Lambos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he also made like a little testing platform, which was really cool. Um, this guy, this used some like next generation fucking, um, battery system. And it was like a single seater, little sports car, like track car thing. And you can see 722 horsepower, 700 kilos. So like under a thousand pounds or under a ton. Zero to a hundred kilometer in two point five four. Yeah, that's just a little faster than my car. Yeah, you know. Well, what's a hundred kilometers? Like six miles an hour? <laughs> yeah, about that. <laughs> I could chalk <talk>, man. <laughs> but yeah, so those are like some of my classmates. I unfortunately the um, the last guy who's like he's making the car company. I have never been able to uh, go see any of his stuff because, like, so the one friend who's at Bentley, he moved to France. He worked at Renault, and then he moved. Now he's in England and he's working at Bentley. Um, so I haven't gotten to see him. The other kid with the car company, he's in India. So like, I'm have no desire i have actually negative desire to go to india for some it's reason it's hot and humid yeah yeah um so <laughs> um but i'm hoping to catch them in the next year the third guy who you haven't seen in the picture we were like a little group mm -hmm. um, he just recently moved to the bay area so i got to i get to see him he's brazilian so we're like a whole international group of retards, which is kind of awesome. That is pretty cool. But I don't get to see them like very often, which kind of sucks, you know? Yeah. Palmer, you're not necessarily wrong, but that design predates the F5 Venom by like fucking forever. I He was working on that design when he was in school. So we're talking like 20... 2012 it's been around for a while for a while yeah i agree palmer i have no desire to go to india <laughs> mad hatter are you in tri-cities so yeah those, those i'm when it, you guys it's so cute, like funny to me when you guys are like oh yeah sure you can draw i'm like yeah because <laughs> I went to school with uh, Shelby's sons. Oh, yeah, that's right. You did. 
That's right. You did. That's so cool, man. I'm actually yeah. like, kind of jealous of that. I'm not even going to lie. Well, you... Matt Hatter, I graduated from Kennewick High School. I think I'm going to hop off. Yeah, oh, I was, okay. was going to say it's uh, 1130 and I'm going to, even though I don't work tomorrow, I got to deal with a three-year-old and an 18 and a half month old tomorrow. I just heard my three-year-old running around upstairs <laughs> and he's no longer in bed. Mm, uh -oh. I don't know where he went. Does that mean he's going to be getting a uh, whooping? No, I don't. He wasn't feeling good earlier, so I, I don't know where he went, but I don't know. We'll see. But he wasn't feeling too good. Look at that, Maddie. Oh, Shreve, you don't have to do mine right now. How cool is that, though? <laughs> Just throwing something out there. I know? actually really like the curved, like the original. Um, the original swedge or fuller cut in it like that. Just keeping that little, angle to it. A little something like that, you know? Yeah. It needs the it needs the poon though. That's what brings it together, Sharif. Well, we can always a continuous line up. from tip to poon. <laughs> we can always poon it up. Like no, that. no, needs to go back more at the very top. Oh, well, that, that actually doesn't look bad. But I like the way I kind of like the way this looks, though. What about that? It's like a halfway poon. I mean, you're gonna you want a half poon, you want a full poon, all the way up Not here. Not like that far, Sharif. No, at the very <laughs> top, right, right there. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Right there. You want, you want. Just poo. Kind of like right there. So you're sure? Not like back here, right? You should uh, make it like a barbed poon. Put it all the way at the back of the handle. <laughs> like poon? <laughs> way back there. Like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> 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 all right. So we got, we got poon. I love the look of a harpoon knife. Oh, it's yeah. Just, there's something about it. And it gives you a perfect place for your thumb. That's what I like about them. Yeah. There we go. So we can do that a little bit. Do the Zon thing and have a double poon. Zons are too rich for me. I can't even afford to look at them. Does the man with the Arius. Yeah, seriously, I don't have an Arius. I might sell my areas. How much you want for it? Enough to Would... buy my air, air conditioning compressor. And... I was surprised oh. how many people up here in the Pacific Northwest don't have air conditioning. Like, it's just not a thing. I'm like, do you guys know what heat is? And how yeah. much it sucks? It's coming. Mm -hmm. It's a coming. And see, that's what I wanted too. See how the Phoenix is on the bolster? I wanted it like that. I wanted nothing on the blade. Yeah. But they put it on the blade. They did. So a I'm, little bit straighter like that, Maddie. And see, that changes the look completely, but keeps yeah. the. It fits the original handle, and I love the handle. Yeah. But this might be more appealing, and I also like it. So it's not like. <laughs> selling out but like changing it to appease more but also it looks cool but i think that straight line looks really good on the bolster yeah. yeah changing it to that yeah that was also gonna that was a uh, one of the things make it a straight line i would okay. this isn't probably what you're going for but it, <laughs> it, it really gives me like Happy day vibes. Like I'm looking at that and I'm like, that's something Fonzie would carry. <laughs> These days have arrived. <laughs> I think it needs to be a little bit more dramatic though. Like more slant. Yeah, because what I'm looking at is 
I'm looking at the angle of this right here. And then I kind of want to repeat that line, you know? You That's one thing I learned from you is uh, a lot of these lines, like they're, they're in line with each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You kind of want repeating lines, you know? It makes like, it more aesthetically pleasing. It does. It, it gives a sense of order. You, you know? either want nothing to match or you want everything to be either in line or perpendicular. I have a question though, Maddie. Oh, I'm, I, I'm trying. I was trying to zoom in on the freaking Chrome page. <laughs> like, oh, let me get in a little closer here. What about just hear me out because I can always put this back. I hate it. <laughs> What a jerk. What if the poon had a little bit of... A recurve? Just a little bit of a curve to it, right? So, let's, uh, let's bring this here. Well, how much did you make it shoot out past the original blade? Because... Uh... I didn't. So, if you look here... I had this vertical line, and that's where I have the uh, tip, right? So, so it, it would still fit in the handle. Yes. Well, that's that's going to be the next thing that I was going to test, right? Because it looks like it shoots out farther than the. Well, visually it may, but let's let's validate that, right? So keep it validated. Let's do what I was doing before. Which yeah, do your thing. Doing this guy. He does this thing where he like cuts a little piece of it and he'll copy it and then he'll flip it around. I see Palmer carrying that knife. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, here. Here. Let me just do this. Steel type on the spine to have zero billboarding. Yeah, I'm not a fan of billboarding. Yeah. I, if they have to have it on the blade, the spine is okay, but I also don't mind like right up against the bolster. But I don't like it when it's on the blade. Matt Hatter, you might have graduated uh, when my dad graduated. Come I again? Not, not that I'm saying like, yeah, my dad graduated. I'm trying to think. My dad. My dad was born in 62, so he actually would have graduated a couple years before you. So, something like this. Yeah. The tip is, like, right there, though. No, I mean, like, I can do that and pull it into the handle a little bit more. But there. you actually, I mean, theoretically, you could actually go... To like there with the tip so you may even be able to get a little bit more length out of it so if i take that that i what i just tweaked and i spin it back you'll see what i'm talking about like you mean just a little bit longer yeah i do i do like the extra length yeah <laughs> it is what she said too but don't we all yeah, let's. Where are we at here? We go. Why am I having trouble seeing? The phoenixes oh. aren't matched up. Well, he no, made one bigger not. than the other. Oh. But like, also, actually, that's how it looks. Two sets of wings. That's not what it looks like on Harry Potter. This isn't Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. I mean, that's pretty close. You know, so I've you actually always get... been a fan of the Phoenix Bird. My dad, when I was a kid, he had a Trans Am, the big Phoenix on the front. He had a 1977. Nice. I've always been a fan. That's a cool bird. And then you get cool things like this. And this little guy. Hey, buddy. Yeah. I like it so much. I named Eli after it. I thought his name was Eli, not Phoenix. 
Elijah Phoenix. But it's his name is Elijah. Phoenix is just his middle name. If I were him, I'd just go by my middle name. Come you, you could shorten both of them and call him Eli Fifi. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> then we will send him home with black and blue eyes. <laughs> I told them my name was Eli Fifi, and they just beat the crap out of me. <laughs> I didn't know what I did wrong. Why would they do that? They wouldn't stop hitting me. They, they were like, Fifi, Mom, <laughs> Exactly. Man, if you name your kid Fifi, <laughs> Jesus, like, that, that is a jailable offense. <laughs> I just Fifi go clean your room, boy. <laughs> Ezra's middle name is Stanley, and it has nothing to do with the movie or book holes. But I'm so excited for him to grow older because I'm gonna call him Yelnats all the time. I'm gonna be like, Yelnats, <laughs> Stanley Yelnats. Mm -hmm. I loved that movie. Me too. Had one of the best rap songs in it. That holes rap song that they did. Digging up them holes. Dum, oh. dum, digging up them. Yeah, I don't remember the song, but yeah. yeah. It was cool. See, I kind of dig this design, Sheree. What do you think? I'm liking it. I mean, I'm adding a, a little bit of Sheree flavor with this curve, but I think that that softens the lines and works with the um, with the the handle shape just a little bit. You know, I don't I don't mind a little Sharif flavor in my sauce. Yeah, just do. Just don't do a two-tone blade. The Phoenix has some Sharif flavoring in it. Two-tone blade. Don't do it. Do it? Nope. All right, Sharif, two-tone blade. No. <laughs> let, me, let me do that right here. There we go. Make it all black right here. Actually, when blades are two tone, I like it when it's belt satin vertical and yeah. then like horizontal flats. Mm -hmm. I think that's a nice look. Yeah. Oh, I don't have a name for my third design yet. I want to keep my my space theme going. You know, Phoenix Orion. You can call it the Phoenix. You can call it the Phoenix Reborn. No, this is the third design. Oh, that one. Yeah, but it's like a steak knife, and I don't think there's like a porterhouse constellation. <laughs> it would be awesome, though. It would be awesome. What do you think about that, Maddie? See, that looks awesome. I think that would be more appealing to people too. Generally. Like, because people are kind of plain Jane, but I think it works visually. Like, it's got design flow to it. Keeps, like, a bit of your original intent, but yeah. Phoenix goes Phoenix with too. more traditional blade shape. I want to find a good swedge to put into it. Like, I had the curve on the original. I want to find something that'll... I kind of liked having a cutout in the blade there. Yeah. What if you just called your third one the ribeye? The ribeye. It's a steak knife. You could also, I mean, if you wanted some, like, crazy Sharif flavor, you could do, like, what I've been doing lately and go crazy like this. Oh no, once you erase that line, me no likey. Well, hold on, let me just show it to you. Okay. That's all right. I'll save my me no likey for a few minutes. <laughs> You're just going to keep it locked and loaded. It's locked, it's ready. The next word's out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah, a little bit more extreme. Me no likey. <laughs> I was waiting for it. I think this looks better, personally. I think that looks better. And the, the swedge, I have like, I changed the, I'm working on it, but 
The top is flat to match the new, but then the bottom has a little curve to it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'll work on it some more. Do you, do you want it to have a little... I, th I like that you were talking about doing a recurve. You could always do like a little... Uh, people don't like recurves, I've learned. People are dumb. People are dumb. But you could do like a little... Not at like an intense recurve, but something where the blade kind of... Yeah, the, see, like, yeah, the, the horse wiener. That does look good. Like a gentle... Ah. <laughs> I have never I... seen a horse wiener, so... I have no reference. <laughs> oh, that's what I was going for. You know, the phoenix always dies and is reborn. You could do something like that. See, that does look cool. It gives it a little bit more character. That's that's kind of what I accidentally did on the first one, but mm -hmm. I ended up liking it. Well, the, what I was the reason I was thinking about it is I because like it a lot. you've got this continuous curvature from like uh, oh, well, all the way across to the back. Yeah, yeah, right. So like you're getting this sort of continuity through here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that looks really good, actually. That's hella um, sweet. You can call it the Sweet Tooth. There you go. I'm going to call it the Phoenix V2 or something. The Phoenix, the Phoenix V2, Phoenix. the Risen Sweet Tooth. Phoenix Reborn. With, with, a, with a Sweet Tooth. But I'm liking the direction. It definitely has a nice feel to it. Yeah, and I already know that the handles are super comfortable. Right. It's hard on that. So just changing the blade and a little bit of bolster, but like keep the stuff that people really liked. Yeah. I think it's going to be cool. You should send it to Civivi and be like, hey, make this instead of Kaiser. I think mean, Kaiser, do they do V2s? Yeah. I mean, we may be seeing a version two uh, mini kind of. Coming out, or Grazioso, yeah, Grazioso, uh, coming out probably something around. Well, here, Derp. why don't I stop sharing my screen? I know, Kyle. People, I thought, I thought more people would like the version. I was hoping to change the game, but this that's the thing, right? Sandwich knife. The the thing that a lot of people need. To, well, okay, so this is why I've always done the, or not always, but I've recently been doing those, um, those holes like you introduced me to, Manny. Yeah, they're fun. Uh, because I wanted to see kind of like what people's biases were. I like the criticism, Kyle. Keep it coming. But the thing is, like, I feel a lot of people, like, they want new, but they're a little afraid of it and you kind of got to show them the way a little bit so like i think i have my next four knives potentially figured out one for sure i'm leaning towards bringing to the market <laughs> uh, and kyle kyle and i were discussing that but like this is going to be one of them yeah this guy right I don't like, don't like that. That looks so good. It's because I want to like I want to do the knives that I like, right? Mm -hmm. And like this is another one that I'm working on. It's not what you like. It's what the consumer likes. Well, if I'm doing it under my brand, like they you only like that. snakes and sparklers. <laughs> uh, but uh, Stephen, if you share my screen when you get a chance, come yeah. on. Steven. <laughs> so like this is another one of my designs that I'm working on. Like I previously did this was a different knife, but I've I'm trying to rework the blade, you know? And this is something I want to fucking carry. I think it looks cool. Yeah. 
You keep yeah. saying that's not the ruckus handle, it's something else, but I keep picturing the ruckus handle. It's, I, I love the ruckus handle. It's very similar. It's not the ruckus handle because the ruckus handle dips lower in the rear than this one. Though. Okay. This one's more horizontal. You know, oh, your, your, your ruckus handle like fits in the hand so good. And the, this is based on that premise, right? But it's yeah. like I said, it's more horizontal, you know? So, uh, but it has the same flavor, we'll say. I like that flavor. Yeah. But yeah, so like if you look at that, you look at this, right? Like I'm sure people are going to bitch. They're going to be like, oh, fucking recurve, aggressive shapes. I'm like, but I like that stuff. You know what I mean? I think people are more open to like that than they were the Persian. But if you remember, most of the people who got into it were like, yeah, this may not be for everybody, but the more I've used it, the more I've liked it. There's that ruckus. You see how the, the tail droops down more on the ruckus? It like swings down. That's the difference between the two. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good handle, though. It's a good knife. It's one of my favorite. It was the it was the first Sharif uh, Manganis knife that I got. And if you watch my video, don't watch my video. But if you watch my video, it was before I knew who Sharif was. And I was like, Sheriff Manganese? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know who he is, but I like his knife. <laughs> and so it was the first one that I was able to do, like, a big old front flip like that. And I really liked it. Yeah, dude, it's um, I I like the ruckus a lot. I I keep one in the kitchen, uh, at my place for whenever I bring home like packages and I just need a knife. If I don't have one on me, I know that one's always sitting there. And I even took one over to my dad's place along with my camo uh, momentum. So there's always a knife available. Like if we get packages or whatever, we can just you know open something up and like the reason i did the ruckus is because i wanted a fucking everyday carry tactical inspired knife you yeah. know and super comfy yeah you know but you can feel that like this is exactly like you were saying like you've got your stop pin back here Here's that little, this isn't designed for front flip. It's designed to hit that stop pin, but you can yeah. front flip on it because of where, because of what you designed the handle to come down. And like, it's, it's so nice. So nice. Sherman magnesium is probably my favorite one now. <laughs> Sherman magnesium. <laughs> Great design. <laughs> That's probably my favorite one now. <laughs> Sharif, next time Sherman you film Magnesium. a video, can you please just introduce yourself as Sherman Magnesium and like pay no attention to it? Sharif, why'd you stop doing your fun intros? You used to do fun intros where it was like, oh, bro, oh, I'm Sharif. Oh, I'm a nun. Well, let me tell you about this. Well, let me tell you about this. <laughs> they, they make me happy every time I watch their videos. Oh, <laughs> dude, I love I love those, but they took so much like extra yeah. effort. Yeah, and sure. like I, I kind of want to bring them back. Day. I'm not gonna lie, like I kind of like, but he, I I'll tell you what really was the breaking point for them was just I had trouble coming up with an, a new idea for like every fucking video. You yeah. know, yeah, like so. I think I want to bring them back, but I want to bring them back when I'm inspired to do one, you know. Like, yeah, like I, I loved uh, the one that I did for Bob Trizola when I got like the CKF, and I was like, Oh, the light of the heavens is like shining upon me, you know, or like the one where I was like being chased by the police, you know, those, yeah. those were fun ones. You know, I mean, now I've got the Pharaoh's like headdress and I've got the Mandalorian mask. So yeah. I've got more stuff to do, you know, so it's funny. Just as a quick side note, sorry, I didn't mean to like jump in, but like it's gotten so bad. Like I didn't buy the Mandalorian mask, 
my dad bought this for me and he was <laughs> like i saw this and i thought you'd like it for doing your online show <laughs> that's awesome that is pretty cool yeah it's sick <laughs> that's awesome yeah man <laughs> All right. Well, we are at two and a half hours. It is almost midnight, so I'm gonna I'm gonna call it for myself. But uh, I can't even see Maddie. He's so fuzzy. Oh Maddie. yeah. Why did I get all fuzzy? It's just your eyes. We're all tired. Yeah. That's how I see the world right now. I'm waking up early. Yeah. There we go. All right. Well, thank you everybody for hanging out. I appreciate everybody for coming in. Shreve, thank you for doing some designing work with me and Maddie. Thanks oh, for Maddie. everyone sure. coming in. Uh, big shout out. It's been just a fun night. So appreciate yeah. you all for jumping on with us and everyone for hanging out in the chat for so long. So till next time, peace. Oop. You got to push the button twice. <laughs>